Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about is this knife right here better than the CRK or Chris Reeve knives Sabenza. Now, if you don't know what we're looking at, hopefully you do. This is a CRK Incosi and I've had it for a few months now. I thought I would talk about what I think of this blade and is it truly better than the is it truly better than the CRK Sabenza or the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza? And the primary reason why I wanted to get an Incosi is because I see the Incosi, or ultimately I should say the Incosi was basically the successor to the, um, the Sabenza 25. The Sabenza 25 was kind of the modernization of the Sabenza, but because it took its own kind of way and its own style, they ended up making it into its own knife, different and distinct from the Sabenza itself. So this is a Sabenza 21 here, and of course this is an Inkosi. Now these are both large, both have micarta inlays, and they're fairly similar, but different enough in their own rights. So I thought it'd be worth talking about, was it worth me getting this guy? Do I like it? And is it better than a Sabenza? So let's first talk about, is it better than a Sabenza? So this one, of course, is a little bit different. This is a Tonto tipped Sabenza, and this one is in CPM S35VN. It's a newer, um, this is a 21, so this was before they released the 31, but this one is still a pretty new, fairly new uh, guy. And I've had it for a few years. It is well broken in, as you guys can probably tell, because it just flies to make a liar out of me it just flies open and it is very very smooth and honestly a really nice knife to use and i've had several sabenzas over the years but this one is definitely the one that stayed in the collection and the one that i love the most because it looks classy it's high performance and i really do like it now the Incosi is a little bit different because it is just slightly uh, thicker or more robust in general and for me the immediate feel is that all of CRK's knives are built with a high degree of precision but the Incosi is just a notch up in precision it is really it just feels very strong it feels like very much locked in and it really does exude that kind of bank lock feel that they talk about um, or the CRK kind of says like their their knives just lock up like a bank vault I think they say and uh, it's it definitely feels that way and this one is not quite broken in yet even though I do play with it a lot so I can sometimes get it to flick out but not a whole lot to be honest and I've also disassembled this knife because you do that a lot with CRKs and I can tell you that the um, level of precision or the fitment with everything the hardware the blade is just super super there like when you're trying to put in the pins and stuff uh, you have to be on point like if you're just even slightly off it's actually a struggle to reassemble this knife because of how tight the tolerances are and uh, so yeah this thing is just very very well put together and honestly um from that perspective, like this is a thicker, kind of a little bit more robust feeling, a little bit heavier feeling blade that is just super, super well put together and super tight tolerances. And honestly, that's kind of what you'd come to expect with a CRK. These guys are just known for being that way. And that's kind of, I think their claim to fame for Chris Reeve is that these knives are assembled very well and very meticulously. So do I think it's better than the CRK Sabenza? I definitely think it's better um, in a way put together, but I honestly feel it's a little bit frustrating because I really do love how fast I can just flick this thing open. And this just feels like a well-oiled machine as opposed to the CRK and Kosi. And maybe as I break it in, because like I said, I have had this one for a few years, disassembled it a few times, cleaned it out, of course. This guy still needs to be broken in. So maybe it'll break in to be as smooth, but honestly, Honestly, I feel like it probably will always be just a little bit, just a cut above because of how precise it is and uh, just how tanky the blade is. So, and to give you guys some example of the blade thicknesses, it's kind of hard to show here um, because they're not too terribly different, but you guys can see there that the Incosi is just a little bit thicker. So, it is also definitely, or I should say the Nkosi is also definitely um, more modern. It has a lot of touches like the ambidextrous or dual thumb studs on it. It also has a different locking mechanism. So the Reeve integral lock is still there. But another important thing to note about it is that it uses a ceramic detent and that ceramic detent is positioned on the um, lock bar in a way that it not only acts as the detent, but it also is the interface surface 
with the blade. So you don't have that, that titanium, that softer titanium interacting with the hardened steel. You have the hardened uh, ceramic ball bearing that interacts with the blade. So it provides a really good lockup and honestly a really cool lockup that I feel a lot of people don't actually know about that I think makes the Cosi really neat is the fact that it has that different kind of lockup. Um, it's very, uh, a, it's very untraditional. So aside from that, you also have improved ergonomics, or at least what I would consider improved ergonomics. I know that the Sebenza has been very much a kind of like coveted design where no one touches the handle shape, and it really does feel good. It feels very natural in hand, but inherently the extra kind of finger grooves in the handle definitely make it feel a lot more natural and a little bit more secure in my opinion. So I really like the improved ergonomics and in fairness, I kind of knew that I would love the Inco C because I have handled 25s. I have a friend that owns a 25, so I've definitely handled and played with his uh, Sebenza 25. So I knew that I would like the 25 or Inkosi now that it is um, because I did like the 25 so much. I just never really got the chance to buy a 25 when they were new. And of course, buying them on secondary can be just as expensive, if not more expensive than buying a brand new Inkosi. Um, now I guess it's a little bit different with the uh, stepped up increase in price but back when I bought this one you know it was about $550 for the inlaid version of a uh, Inkosi whereas standard regular plain Jane uh, Spenza 25s were going for you know close to $600 so that's why I chose the Inkosi um, because I just really couldn't get a 25 and I did really want a 25 at the time so that is uh, kind of my experience with this guy. I've really enjoyed carrying it and it's actually been fun to have a drop point of all things with the bench or bench made, uh, CRK because I've actually never owned a Chris Reeve Sebenza or Sebenza like knife with the normal standard drop point. I've only ever owned Tontos or Insingo grinds, which I think are really cool. And I definitely love the Insingo. If I could, I definitely, and at some point we'll probably end up picking up a CRK either Sebenza or uh, Inkosi with an Insingo because I do really like the Insingo grind. But the drop point is really nice, very utilitarian. And the biggest thing that I enjoy is very similar to the Sebenza. These are very classy knives, very elegant. And I think they fit into a lot of situations very well. So if you need to, you know, like have a knife for going out on town or, you know, you just want to look fancy, you're going to a special occasion. These are the types of knives that I pull out for those types of situations, especially. But I'm also not above just rocking a Sebenza or an Encosi just for the fun of it. They are really well-made knives. And uh, as far as like precision engineering goes, these are really spot on. And this really hits that itch for a really well, really um, precisely made blade. It's not custom, but it really does feel like it and it has a lot of those touches. And overall, the other thing that I like about the Inkosi, even more than the Sebenza, is it really feels like they learned from the Sebenza and in every way sat down with the Sebenza's design in mind and just thought of ways that they can improve it tastefully. So like I said, these finger grooves aren't wild looking, but they feel really good. They improve the traction on the jimping. They, you know, of course, remodified the titanium frame lock so that the titanium isn't getting damaged as it locks up over the thousands of times throughout its life. And, you know, just everything about this blade really well engineered, really well thought out, and really well executed. So I'm definitely glad that I ended up picking one up. I have no regrets about getting an Inkosi, and I have quickly learned um, through my own personal tastes that I do carry the Inkosi a lot more than the Sebenza. Even though the Sebenza is very cool in its own right, and if I'm looking for a blade that's just well broken in, uh, like a well-oiled machine, I will definitely grab the Sebenza, but the Inkosi definitely is my go-to. It just feels a little bit more, you know, feels a little bit tankier, feels a little bit more robust, and it is just a nice knife overall. Not to mention the Inkosi is just a really cool blade. I have always liked the style of this knife, even once again when it was the Sebenza 25. Anyways guys, that is my opinions on the Inkosi, and I do think it is better than a Sebenza, but I still think that the Sebenza is worth getting if for no other reason the Sebenza is steeped with heritage and history, and it is just a really excellent knife for that reason. 
Anyways, guys, that is the CRK Incosi. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this blade. And as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.